the apaduro, slate, granite, and baking heat. Anything less like a vineyard is difficult to imagine. Yet this region has produced grapes that make one of the finest wines in the world, port. The quality of the wine stems from the soil, the climate, and the river, this river. The river Douro flows down through the mountains from Spain to the coast. Three hundred years ago, Porto was where English traders exchanged wool for wines. So popular was this robust wine, the demand soared and traders travelled far up the Douro to establish family farms or quintas like Vargelas. Three centuries on and a railway has come to Vargelas. There are few roads here. Until the railway was built, the only way to reach this region was to navigate the Douro. Alistair Robertson is the chairman of Taylor's, an independent family-run company which has produced port since 1692. Well, Vargelas is, is the, the heart of, the, of, Taylor's, of Taylor's vintage port. The reason for that is one of the sort of mysteries of, of wine that we have in all the great wine areas. The terroir, um, as, in, as they say in France, terroir combined with the grape varieties and the climate are that extraordinary combination of things that make one vineyard produce an elegant, beautiful wine with all the balance that one requires for a great wine, and another one fairly close to not quite have it. If you can imagine, we have a, a region with very low rainfall, um, the soils are not very rich, and it, it is fundamental that we are, when we're establishing a vineyard, that we break up the rock underneath to such an extent that um, the vines can explore with their roots down deep into the soil. There are two forms of planting. The terracing, where the bulldozer cuts the, the flat surface onto the sides of the slopes, and that's chosen where the site is too steep and where we cannot do the other form, which is the vertical planting, where we plant the vines up and down the hillside. The vines here are supported by terraces, most built centuries ago. Each year, these terraces suffer from the heavy winter rains. These rains are crucial to top up the underground reserves, which will see the vines through the hot summers. But the water does also damage the dry stone walls, something that keeps the local stonemasons happily employed throughout the year. One of the great strengths of Taylor's is the diversity of its properties here in the best part of the Douro. It is vital for, um, as a winemaker, to have the blending option of two very distinct quintas. And behind us you can see Quinta Teja Feita, which is in the Pignon Valley. This valley is in the central part of the Zorno, and uh, it's, although it gets very hot here, it doesn't get as hot as Varchelas, and uh, there's slightly more rainfall. And what that tends to do is it produces very big, plummy wines where the freshness of fruit really stands out. The best wine is always going to be a combination of um, the best features of, of different areas. And for if I can get that structure, plumminess from Terra Feita, and then add the finesse and uh, qualities and, and very much the flavour of the Vargelas wines, you can get an overall much more complex port being produced. Alistair Robertson and his viticulturalist have learned over the years which vine flourishes in which particular part of the vineyard. 
Each parcel of land has its own unique qualities. Here at Vargelas, tailors have selected six of the best local traditional varieties that suit their needs. These are Turiga Francesa, Turiga Nacional, Tinta Roriche, Tinta Kong, Tinta Barocca and Tinta Amarela. It will take more than a hundred days for these flowers to develop into the grapes that will make port. The warmth of the spring rises to over a hundred degrees in the summer. Then, as autumn arrives, the grapes ripen to perfection. This is the time Alistair and David have been preparing for all year. Inside the winery, the traditional granite lagars are made ready. Here we are at the heart of Vigelas, the heart of the winemaking part of Vigelas. And I always feel here you can see, you can sense the history of port making, and the history of Vigelas and the tailor making a wine through the centuries. This is where the, the grapes are transformed for that incredible moment into wine and port wine. And the grapes here have come down from the hills of Vigelas. These hills are 900 feet above the Douro. Further down the steep 60 degree slope, the deep flowing waters of the river have a cooling effect on the vines. Taylor's vineyards are among the finest. They're rated in the Premier A category. In this heat, the work is hard. Each bunch of grapes is carefully selected and picked by hand before being carried off the hill. From using the hand, it's time to use the feet. The, the serious payment of making port, the cut, when uh, you line up for two hours, hard work, it's really like going back into the army and people are there, there's a sergeant major drilling you for a couple of hours, literally shouting out left, right, left, right, one, two, and then the music starts. Treading the grapes isn't done just to follow tradition. Talus has proved by experience that it's the best way to extract the colour and flavour from the grapes without crushing the pips and so releasing their harsh taste. While the dance continues, the great wooden barrels below are prepared for the new wine. The juice remains in the lagar for two days before the natural yeasts begin to convert the grape sugar into alcohol. After 30 to 36 hours, about half the sugar will have been turned into alcohol. At this point, the wine is run off and a neutral grape spirit, or aguardente, is added. This raises the alcohol level, thus killing the fermenting yeasts and preserving a large amount of natural grape sugar. It is this unfermented sugar that makes port sweet. However, although Taylor's values the old traditional methods, there's substantial investment in new technologies. At Vargelas, these stainless steel vats are some of the most modern in the Douro. And work is well advanced on a machine that's not just as gentle as the foot, but which macerates the skins and juice just as effectively. I'd say the first thing is that they don't look much like feet, do they? <laughs> no, it doesn't, but I think the, the improvements that we made from last year to this year have had a, a remarkable effect on how we're covering all of the cap. Yes. And Mixing the cap of grape skins and pips into the fermenting wine contributes greatly to quality. But will technology triumph over tradition? Time will tell. The new wine will stay in wood for some four months at Vargelas until the spring. It will then be ready to start its journey down to the city of Porto. The River Douro itself was, in many ways, responsible for the huge success of port. In the early days, Barco Rebelos, the local boats, brought the port down from the upper Douro 
to the coast. In those days, the ships of the English wool traders docked here. Wool was unloaded and wine and olive oil were taken on board. The centre of the port trade lies, as it has always done, across the river from Porto, in the town of Villa Nova de Gaia. There, the forefathers of the great port shippers stored their wines in these lodges. It was in 1692 that the Company of Tailors was founded by one such trader, an Englishman called Joe Beersley. His wool sign, the 4XX, remains part of Taylor's heritage and his direct descendants are still numbered among Taylor's present partners. These cool, airy, cathedral-like lodges are ideal for the long storage needed, bringing slower and more gentle maturation. When the wines arrive, they're carefully tasted and assessed. Port basically breaks down into two sorts. We have the vintage port and we have the wood port. But within Woodport, it breaks down further. We have, for example, here with the Taylor's LBV, a port that is aged in large wooden vats, vats that take 10, 20,000 uh, litres, where there's very little contact with the wood. With the tawnies, and we've got here a 10-year-old tawny, uh, these are aged in the small barrels. And these are the wines that, through that extra contact with the wood, the high ratio, if you like, of the surface area of wood, to the volume of the wine, we get a lot of evaporation, a lot of concentration. So we move from these berry fruit flavours here to much more of the raisiny nuttiness. If I put these two up, and just you can just see there on the left-hand side the LBV, lovely rich red colour, and the ten-year-old, which is only actually four years older than this LBV, but very noticeably tawny in colour. If I pick up the Vintage port, this is a young vintage port, this is actually a 1994, but you can see, if I just swirl that around, you can see that incredible inky purple intensity of these wines. And of course, this is a wine that's bottled two years after the harvest, lives the whole of its life in a bottle, and is only, uh, in a sense, uncorked and, and enjoyed uh, perhaps 15 or 20 years uh, after the harvest. The decision to declare a vintage lies with the partners and the winemaker. The conditions needed to produce a wine that reaches the pinnacle of quality they consider necessary for a vintage port may only occur two or three times a decade. Well, the vintage port, um, of course, <clears throat> is the classic drink, the great drink to have at the end of the meal. I, either, traditionally, uh, with the cheese. It's, it is the perfect balance, the cheese, in, particularly in England with the Stilton cheese. Vintage port... Um, balances a, a cheese like Stilton or, or Roquefort beautifully. Taylor's is one of the oldest of the port companies. For more than 300 years it has produced a wine that is recognised internationally as one of the great wines of the world. Now in its fourth century, Taylor's remains a family concern. The story of Taylor's is nothing less than the story of Port. <laughs>